Good morning. I am so excited to be here with you today for today's live. So what you didn't get to see is um, me. I was all grooving out to the village people and I'm like, dun, 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 dun. and you will notice that something is missing today. All right. I, <laughs> an important thing is missing today. And that would be my makeup. I have zero makeup on. And I did that. Hello, Tiggy. I did that because today I'm going to do my makeup with you. And for me, makeup has been a really cool part of my whole journey of self-expression because makeup to me was always something that I told myself I didn't know um, how to do it. Hello, Anika. And so I was always like, oh, you know what? Just put a little here and put a little there and don't let that show. And then finally, in my whole journey um, that I decided that I'm going to be like, no, I'm going to embrace this makeup and I'm just going to be like, Psh. I'm just going to have fun with it. Tiggy says, I have mine out here on my desk. I am ready. Cool. Because you should, you should see my desk. I wish you could kind of see my desk. I mean, it's a little messy, but I have all my makeup laid out that I'm going to put on today. Then I have my little like emergency makeup over there just in case I forgot something. So it's going to be a fun, fun live. Now let's go ahead. Before we start on the makeup and everything, I want to um, take care of a couple of pieces of business. And the first one, and I'm going to cry, and I told myself I wasn't going to cry, but today is my sister's birthday. And we, you all know if you follow me, my sister passed away when she was 47, and today would have been her 64th birthday. And in honor of her birthday, today's entire live stream is going to be in honor of her. Because I was thinking about it this morning, and it is, it is such a painful loss in my life that sometimes I have a tendency to shy away from that subject. And sometimes I try not to think about it because it hurts so incredibly bad. And I decided today that I was going to switch that energy. And instead of being sad, I'm going to be, um, I, I'm just going to live a life in her honor a full of life and full of just beautiful energy in honor of my sister. So let me introduce you to my incredibly beautiful, strong, amazing woman um, who was my who is my sister, and her name is Vicky. And I wanted to show you a couple of pictures, and so that way you can kind of get a visual about um, how um, who I'm talking about and. Um, soul dad said, I know um, how you feel. I lost two sisters. And my, um, my sympathy for you, i giving you hugs. Tiggy says, my sister has been gone now for 39 years and not any easier. No, and it's not. And as a human, we always think that, you know, we always think we're going to outlive our parents. We always think that, you know, um, that the natural, um, that we you know, we just think that we're going to outlive our parents, so we expect them to pass. But I never in a million years thought that, um, thought that I was going to lose my sister um, at, that, at that age. And good morning, Connie. Anika says, it's okay to cry, and sometimes we have to, um, we have to congrats to Vicky. Yes. And, you know, and here's the thing. It's, it's like, I will, it will hit me just really weird certain times, and I'll be driving along and be like, I need to pull over and cry because I miss her so incredibly much. So let me introduce you. Let me introduce you to the beautiful woman, again, that is my sister. So let me pull it up here so I can show you all. Now, this little um, chunky girl in the picture, that would be me. And um, I am there with her and hold on here. So this is what I'm showing right now. So that was my sister and I. She was about five and a half years older than I was. And she always um, took care of me. She was always like, I, I am, you're, I'm going to take care of you. Because my mom, when my mom got pregnant with her, um, she told my sister that she could either have a toucan bird, don't ask me why, or 
she could have a little sister. And my sister was like, oh, you want my little sister? And she never let, she, I never lived it down, the simple fact that she picked me over a toucan bird. I don't know how it was that bird, but that's the bird that she gave up so she could have me. Um, this is a picture of, hold on here. Let me go back. This is a picture of when we were at Disneyland and we were waiting for the Tiki ride and we saw those Donald Duck hats and gosh, I had to be probably 22, 23 at the tops. And so, um, yeah, I was real, I was a youngin back then and we just had so much fun together. And then um, the last picture I want to show you is this is, it's kind of a grainy picture, but um, this is the last picture that we ever took together. And let me show you that one. And where we were at is we were doing a, I know we look so much alike. We were doing, oh gosh, see I told myself I wasn't going to cry, but we were doing a, um, an AIDS walk. And what we did is we, we would, she lived in Palm Springs. And so every, um, every month that they did the AIDS walk, we'd gather up our kids and we'd go marching and we would raise money for the fight of AIDS. And that was the very last one that we did together. And she was in a wheelchair and she passed away from cancer and happy birthday. So yay. All right. I got through it. And yes, we looked identical. And um, we definitely had a lot of the same mannerisms, a lot of the same attitude. And so in a happy moment, um, just so I can end on a happy moment with sharing this memory of my sister, I'm going to share with you my favorite story. And she never forgave me for this. And I was always the mischievous child, believe it or not. I was always the one getting in trouble but I was crafty enough to always get myself out of trouble. Don't ask me how I did it. I just did it. So when I was about four, that would have made my sister about nine, she got a pet turtle. And it was a little desert turtle that she left. Um, Holly says, I can't stay long, but it, this is such a uh, beautiful topic. It's okay to cry. You have created a safe place for everyone, and that includes yourself. Thank you, except now you're making me cry again. Okay, so my sister was about nine and I was about four. And she got a turtle and she named her turtle Charlie Brown. And it was supposed to walk around the backyard and have the best turtle life ever. Well, I was scared of Charlie Brown. Don't ask me why I was scared of this turtle, but I was. And I think it was because, you know, I would go out and since I was scared of the turtle, I would throw things at it. Not, not viciously, but I would just like throw leaves at it or twigs at it. And then it would like, kind of like, like, why are you throwing things at me? So I was so scared of Charlie Brown that they had to, that they gave Charlie Brown away. They gave my sister's um, turtle, hold on here. They gave my sister's um, turtle away. They gave Charlie Brown away. And my sister never forgave me for that. Even when she was passing away and she was in the hospital, I remember her looking at me and going, you know you could have outrun that turtle, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been 50 years and you are still throwing that turtle in my face. And she's like, Lonnie, it was a turtle. She goes, you could have gone anywhere in the backyard, but for that turtle. So she always, that was like our little inside joke is she would always be like, you know, you're faster than a turtle, right? So today I am going to, um, I'm going to channel that energy and I'm going to remember all day long. I am faster than a turtle. And now you know why, if I say that, why I'm saying it. So another piece of business. All right, let's, okay, yesterday, on yesterday's live, I was really upset when I came on because I thought that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had gotten into an almost catastrophic car chase accident 
And it was so much like what had happened to his mom, who what had happened to Princess Diana. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sending you healing vibes. I'm sending you love. And then come to find out, and I'm not saying anything. You know what? I'm sure it was very traumatic, and it was very um, reminiscent like of what had happened to his mom. But it, 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 it's, I don't know. I, 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 like I said, I, when I was like looking into it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what happened to him? You know, are they okay? And they're like, they were chased for two hours by people on scooters. And I'm like, oh, no, I, I was... Um, I, Tiggy says, I can't believe they lied about it. Yeah, you know what? And here's the thing. I am going to, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that it really, um, it really like upset them because it was so reminiscent of what happened to his mom. But I agree. I, I think maybe it was embellished and I'm trying to be really nice and I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. But where I got upset is like I personally really got upset I mean I, I like I said I kind of relate to the situation of Princess Diana being married to King Charles you know having two boys and then to find out I thought something happened to him I'm just like now if he says that something happens I'm gonna have to it's gonna make me think twice let's just put it like that you know and so to me it's like it was kind of like a little disappointed. Not that I'm disappointed that they didn't get into an accident, but I'm just kind of disappointed that um, that they led me to believe they got into an accident. So that's what I was like, ugh. So I know, like I said, yesterday I came on and I was just like all upset. Now I'm just like all like, I can't believe that happened. Then one more piece of business, and then I'm going to start putting makeup on because I'm like, oh, I got no makeup on. Okay, so yesterday I did the whole like Instagram troll kind of like I wore this outfit and this and that and that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the troll came back. Now, I don't know if you saw or not, but I did a little promo wheel reel on, um, yeah, Lauren, it's exactly, it's going to be like the boy who cried wolf. And unfortunately, it's just my my belief and my feeling is, is that the next time I'm going to have to deep dive into it a little bit farther before I, I jump right on it. But my Instagram troll came back and she came back with a vengeance. And because I posted that the re, the um, the promo for yesterday's live and I'm like, I respond to the comment of this picture and I showed the picture, the cute little outfit that I had on. And um, she responded to that reel. And I'm going to show you the comment. This time, I actually screenshot it before I banned her because I did end up actually physically blocking her. Because the way I look at it is like, I like to come on here and just have positivity. And you know what? Truthfully, every time I go on social media, I, I exude some energy. You know what? I give it my energy. And I'm not going to waste my energy on somebody who's going to be mean. And she's just a mean woman. So let me show you the screenshot. Because like I said, I did a screenshot. And we're going to look at it. I'll show you too. Um, so let me go back. Let me find it. And okay. So the screenshot of what she said. And her name is Lisa. And so hold on here. Got to get situated so everybody can be in the same. Boop, boop, boop. Let's see here. I want to go here. I want to go here. I want to go here. And then I'm going to go here. And then I'm going to look down here. And then I'm going to go like that. All right. Now we're all. Okay. So much technology. Okay. You ready? All right. So Lisa, her name is Lisa Buck. That's her right there she says i'm a girl mom and i'd never attempt to embarrass my girls by trying to dress like that what's best is that she then hashtags to each their own hashtag girl power all right 
for so for me, if you're gonna do hashtag to each their own, then you know what, Lisa Buck, then you know what, leave me alone and stop being mean. If you're gonna be like hashtag girl power, then you might want to start empowering other women and stop trying to tear them down because you cannot sit there and be all like, oh, I'm going to be girl power and then be like, you're an embarrassment. And you can't be like, oh my gosh, you know what? To each their own. But I'm going to just constantly tell this woman that everything she wears is horrible. Everything that she says is wrong. And that just doesn't work for me. That's not my energy. And I said, no more. Anika says, doesn't she have a life? My God, how bitter must she be? Poor her. Absolutely. Courtney says, did she really hashtag girl power after those backhanded comments? Yes. Yes, she did, Courtney. That, as far as she's concerned, that's girl power. And I looked at it. You know what? And truthfully, yesterday, I'm like, Shh, water off a duck's back. This doesn't bother me. And tr this one, it just, it, it got to the point where I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to kick her out of the sandbox. She ain't playing with me anymore because there are just certain people who don't want to ever play nice. You know, I got bullied in junior high school and high school. I am not going to be bullied as an adult. All right. So if you're going to come into my universe and you're going to tell me that the things that I'm doing are embarrassing or cringy or something like that you know what i have the power to be like be gone be gone in their um instagram troll i don't want anything to do with you so i blocked her and she and i and i'm i feel really good about that um and courtney is absolutely um blocking somebody right now thank you courtney so courtney is my eye in the sky for tiktok um, and apparently, um, somebody was being rude cause she's like, block, block, block. All right. And Courtney, just block away. Don't let people like that in. I got a good, I got a good watchdog on my TikTok. So yes, she's gone. She's gone. It felt good. And, and here's the thing. It's like really quick and I'm going to finish it up cause then I have to start on my makeup, but I don't care. You know what? Opinions don't bother me. You can say, oh, I don't really care for that outfit. I wouldn't wear that. And I'd be like, awesome. You know what? That's your, that's your opinion. But her comments were absolutely 100% meant to tear me down and to make me feel bad about me being me. And that is when I say no more. All right. Um, yay, let's do our makeup together. Awesome. I am ready. Connie says, Lonnie, I joined an over 50 hairstyle group on Facebook. I posted a picture with my cute short blue hair, got a lot of positive comments. But of course, someone said, sorry, it looks terrible. Oh, well, you know what, Connie? I'm sorry. That's just Facebook. I'm sorry. And I personally don't think Facebook is a very positive place. And um, I just, I, I, I stay arm's distance away from Facebook. That's just, it seems, there seems like to have a lot of toxic energy over there. All right, so makeup. Let's start with prepping your skin as I'm slapping myself. All right, um, let's see. All right, first, and I did this when I got out of the shower because I wanted to give it time to sink in, but I did use this e.l.f. Holy Hydration Daily Moisturizer. When I first got this, I said that it was too sticky and I didn't care for it. Um, I have since kind of embraced kind of that little stickiness because I want it to be more like a primer and help keep my foundation on. And it's not super sticky, but it definitely had kind of a little bit more of a sticky texture. But I've had it on for about an hour and it's not sticky anymore, but it is, um, it feels good. Yeah, no, Facebook, and you know what, and each to their own, and you can all pick your own social media platform, but for me, again, I find, um, I find a lot of toxicity over there, and Connie, I follow you on all your social media platforms, you are an amazing woman, and your blue hair looks great, and I am so proud of you for everything that you are doing on social media because you look like you're having so much fun. So don't let those Facebook trolls stop you. So next what I'm gonna do now 
is I am going to, yeah, Lauren says the sticky helps with the foundation stick on all day long. Absolutely. And I, um, I finally got over the sticky part and I'm dealing with it. But I have been using this rock. This is like a little product and it's a multi-correction um, stick for your eyes and it has vitamin C. And what it is, is it's kind of like chapstick for your eyes. So what I do is I got my little mirror here. Ah, sorry. I got my little mirror that I'm gonna set down here. And so that way I can actually see what I'm doing. Yay. So I have this little correction stick. And like I said, it's like, I think it's like chapstick for your eyeballs. And I just put it on and it just gives my eyes a little bit more of a hydration. And it's super easy to apply. And that's what I put on during the day. So that goes on. Then, all about sunscreen. You need sunscreen on your skin, you need sunscreen on your face, you need sunscreen everywhere. And the sunscreen that I have been all about lately for my face is the um, e.l.f. Woe Glow Sunscreen. And this has an SPF 30, and I absolutely love it. Because, you know, during my makeup journey, when I first started, I was all about like a matte look. I liked that... I liked a matte look because I always had really oily skin as a kid and I always associated um, that glow with an oily skin and like having a breakout when I was younger. And then now that I'm older, I associate having that glow of a skin with more of like a healthy kind of glowing skin like you want when you're younger and you have a breakout problem so it to me it was just kind of a weird shift in my way of thinking because um like i said i went from not wanting a glow and a shine to wanting a glow and a shine so i always make sure that i put it all over my neck also hello betty how are you my friend connie you are very welcome all right, um, yeah, <laughs> Facebook is feral, and I do like that comment. Okay, so now that I have that in, what I do at this point is I will be putting on a primer on top of that, but I kind of just want it to soak in just a little bit. So what I do while that's soaking in, I start on my eyes, and I am going to go in. That's the wrong thing. I use a MAC. This is a Pro Long Wear Paint Pot. And what this does is this is my primer for my eyes. And I just put a little Now you can use a brush or you can use your finger, but I just put a little primer right on my lids. And I do that again just because like I'm primering my face. I want my eye makeup to stay where they are, to stay where it is, to stay where I put it. That's what I'm trying to say. So I primer my eyes and you can use, I mean, truthfully y'all, I'm going to let you know what products I use. I like all the products I use, but just pick what works for you. I mean, this isn't a, I want to sell you everything that I use kind of post. This is just a hang out with me. And this is, this is how I get my look every day. So I have it primered, and then I have a little sip of coffee. <laughs> All right, so for the eyeshadow, I really like bright eyeshadow, but I also, too, really like, like a brown kind of smoky eye. And my two favorites are, at this time, I go back and forth between the house laboratories. This is one that I got off of Amazon because um, she now sells, I think it's at Sephora is where you can get um, the house labs. But this one has like a real cool, a real cool palette and I like that. And then for a really super easy price, I mean a good price, I like this little wet and wild palette. And this is walking on eggshells. And so for today, just for shit, just for, 
poops and giggles, um, I am going to use the Wet n Wild one because this cost me like three bucks. I mean, this was super affordable. So we're going to go in and we are going to start applying the eyeshadow. So what I do is you have a couple of different shades. You have from the lightest to the darkest. And what I like to do is I take this, this shade right here, like this brown right there, and I will put it all over my eyes. And I'm trying to see if I want to change the lighting. Hold on, don't go anywhere. Today's the first day in a very long time that it's been sunny since I started. So there, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this shade right here. This brown right there. And I'm gonna put it all over my lid. I'm just gonna be like, do, 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 do. And it just kind of gives me a little base of just kind of like where I'm gonna start from. And boop, 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 boop. Apply, 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 and it's going on. Do, do, do. Okay, so once I have just kind of like the top base on, I'll use the same brush. And if y'all don't have one of these, I showed you the other day this one, and I absolutely love it. But this is from e.l.f., and it's a little um, brush cleaner. And if you're changing colors of your dry eyeshadow, you can just go in and you can clean your brush really quick. And then you can apply your next color without feeling like you're getting your colors all blended. I thought it was really cool. It only cost me like $3. And I'm sure you can like buy something or you can make your own, but I really liked it because it came in a cute little tin. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm taking the next darkest brown color and I'm gonna put that like right in the middle of my eye. And I'm just kind of gonna almost cut my eye in half, if that makes any sense. So I'm going in and I'm just gonna put the little bit of a darker brown. And I wanna make sure that I get enough on because I want you to see it. So from the middle of my eye out, I'm going to be putting the little bit of a darker brown. And of course, today of all days, I forgot to get one of those little um, those little little pad things that make um, if you have like any overage of your eyeshadow, it kind of you can just peel it off, but we'll work around it, you know, because that's just what we do. So now I have a little bit of a darker brown. And as you can see, I have it all over my face, but again, we're gonna clean it up. So we have that. Now, again, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna clean my brush because we're gonna go to the next darkest brown. And we're gonna go in. Now with this darkest brown here, I'm gonna just go along the edges of my eye and then just a little bit underneath. So we're going to put it right in the corners and then a little shading underneath. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other eye, just a little bit on the corners with a little shading underneath. And what I do also too, since I have a little bit of a darker on my brush, I'll go ahead and I will just from the outside in. I will take it over just a little bit. And I have, uh, I wouldn't say hooded eyes, but I have, I have large, I have a large spot between my eyebrows and my eyeballs. So I like to go a little bit above my crease so you can see the little bit of a shading and then I take it all the way over. So that way I have a nice little brown smoky look that I have started and I have brown all over my face but again we will make that work and I want to make sure that I have it all the way in the corner because again I want it connecting 
right? Same brush, same brush, and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna clean it once more, because what I wanna do now is on this palette, there's a really cool, like almost like a peach color, uh, right there, a peach color, and on that one, I'm gonna be doing the insides. So I have the darkest on the outsides and then the peach color on the inside. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna very lightly kind of dust the inside, this nice little peach color to give it almost like making my eyes look a little bit wider apart. And um, try and use a fluffy powder brush. It may help remove the fallout, Lauren. Absolutely, I got one on standby. And once I get these last couple of shades on, I'm gonna do like a little um, cleanup with a brush. Thank you. And we're going to put the peach color right there. Again, the lighter color on the inside, darker color on the outside. And I just have fun with it. You know what, there is no rhyme. There is, I mean, there is a rhyme and a reason but I just allow myself to have fun and to experiment with these colors. So what I wanna do, looking at it, looking at it straight on, I do notice that, see when I look straight on, um, you can use a wipe and clean it up then put on the foundation. I don't trust anyone who puts their foundation on first. You know, that is something, Tiggy, that is something that I have learned on my makeup journey is I used to put on my foundation first, and then I would just struggle with trying to get that over um, that overage off. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to darken up just a little bit, the darker brown, so that way you can see it straight on. Um, there, are, there, there are no right ways or wrong ways, but what you want to wear, absolutely. And sometimes I think just like everything else, we get totally hung up on rules and regulations of like, you have to do it this way and you have to do it that way. I mean, yes, there are certain ways to apply makeup that's easier, but so long as you apply it the way that you like, the way that it finally looks, I mean, that's really the outcome that we're going for is to get a look that you want. So I definitely love like having the smoky brown. Um, I love a smoky eye. It's just for me sometimes having like that black smoky eye, because I'm not a professional makeup person, gets to be a little dark. So I have my found I have my eye makeup basically. Oh, I almost forgot one. Almost forgot one. What I want to do now is I take a little bit of a bigger brush and I go to the lightest shade. And what I'll do now is I will put a little bit of a dusting up on top just to clean it up, give it a little bit of a brightness. And now, and now I have on basically my eyeshadow of how I'm going to be doing it. I wear too much colorful eye looks, so foundation is the last before my eyes. Yes, I mean, before my eye look. Yes, you have to, you have to, I, I personally think you have to lay down your, um, your eyeshadow before you put your foundation on. Otherwise, you're just going to be wiping your foundation off and you're going to have to reapply it. And, you know, I, one thing that I learned on my makeup journey is that you need to be kind to your face. The first time that I did, um, the first time that I did a makeup tutorial, I was like, and I was like rubbing really hard under my eyes and I was like rubbing my foundation on really hard and I had so many people be like no you have to be kind you have to be gentle so now I definitely uh, make sure that when I'm applying anything especially under my eyes I'm doing it very carefully because I don't want to tear down that skin that's under there because I'm working on getting it tighter and the last thing I want to do is tear it down at all. So I have my eye shadow on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in now with my putty primer from e.l.f. This is the poreless putty primer. And I'm going to primer my face. And then I'm going to go back and do my eyeliner and my mascara. So 
So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to put down my little primer. So that way on top of my sticky lotion, I'm going to have a nice little primer and it's going to keep what foundation I put on in place. I really like this primer. And if you have a, um, a tendency to lose your foundation during the day, I would say double primer. And that's basically where you would take a putty primer like this first, and then you can do something along the lines like a mineral infused primer, something along those lines. Um, Lauren says foundation is last after my eyes. I meant to say yes, absolutely. And it's one of the best tricks that I've learned. So I'll go ahead, I'll let that set where it needs to be. And now I'm going to do my eyeliner. I love kind of a black smoky eyeliner, but what I've noticed happened is like the other day when I went shopping, I went into the bathroom and I looked like a raccoon. I looked like somebody came up and just smeared my face. And so I have gone back to a kind of like a cream liner and this is the MAC, this is the black track, and this is the Pro Longwear Fluid Line. And I get this tiny little brush that I got and I dip it into my little paint pot, bloop, 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 just like that. And I will be going real close to my eyelashes. And what was happening that I didn't care for using this is that the brush that I was using was too wide. So I was getting this really heavy black liner. And sometimes when you have that real heavy blackness up on top, it just kind of makes your eyes look a little sunken in. And I don't think it has like a very nice kind of easy look. I don't know. I mean, if I were going out at night and I was doing like a black smoky eye, yeah, I would totally have that thick black line. But during the day when you have lighter eyeshadow and then you have that big thick black line, I just don't think it goes. So with my little line pencil, I go in again, real close to my lashes. See how that is? Real, real, real good. Um, to stop it from smudging, use a black eyeshadow to set it all. You know, I was actually using a black eyeshadow as the liner and it just, it for some reason, just it wasn't staying the way that I wanted it to. Now, another thing that I was doing that I no longer do that often is I was putting eyeliner underneath my lid right here. And um, while it's, if you do that, let's just put it this way. If you do do that, make sure that you get an eyeliner that is, um, that says that you can put it underneath your lash because you don't want it to clog any pores or anything like that. So as you can see right now on this eye right here, I have just that real little line. And with this little brush, I have the look of the eyeliner without it being too like, like, like I said, it looked like I had a caterpillar going across my eye. And this one I think is small enough but applied well enough that you get the effect without that big heavy line. So I'm going to go in with my next one and we're going to put that on. See, you can already see the difference. And I think makeup is so fun. And personally, I think if you're not a makeup person and you don't want to wear makeup, I think women are just as beautiful without makeup as they are with makeup. Makeup is such a personal um, journey that I don't think we should ever feel required to wear it. But if you do wear it, just have fun with it. So I have, so I have, that's all the eyeliner I'll use. Like I said, I want to keep it real simple and real, um, real fine line. That's what we're doing so far. Now, I am, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on my brows. When I started my makeup journey, I was always under the impression that 
you didn't want really heavy black brows. I always was afraid I was going to look like an angry bird. Don't ask me why, but I did. So I was using like a light, almost like light auburn brown, and it was pulling a lot of red out of my eyebrows. Because when I had my natural, naturally colored hair, um, it was like, oh gosh, it was kind of like a reddish brown hair. So my hair has a tendency to pull red. And what I have done since is I've gone to either a dark brown or a soft black because I just want my eyebrows to show a little bit more. And I am going in with my NYX, the brown, I'm sorry, the brow glue. Um, Ellie is asking what liner you said you use again. I, Ellie, I am, that was the MAC Pro Liner. Um, it's from MAC and it's the Pro Long Wear Fluid Line. They come in all different colors and it's just a little, it's kind of like a combination between almost like a liquid and it's a cream. There you go. I, I, I remember Courtney, you had to tell me what cream was yesterday and I remember what it is today. And just so you all know, everything that I'm using is in my shop, my look link that's in my link tree. Um, it's under daily makeup and feel free to check in there. All of this makeup is in there. So I do, I'm using the NYX brow glue. Now I saw this on TikTok and I have done it this way. It is, um, I take my little brush and I just, I comb it backwards and I kind of just get that coloring all in my brow. So I give myself one of those like nutty professors kind of like eyebrow. See how it's all standing up? And then I'll go in on my other one and I'll do the same thing. Again, brushing backwards and getting that coloring all in my eyebrow. And I'll just let it sit there. It sits there and it hangs out. It does its things until I'm ready to do something more with it. So that's what I do there. And then the next thing I'm gonna put on is my mascara. I love black mascara. I have yet to find the perfect blue mascara, but I really like the black. I've been using L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. There was the whole controversy on TikTok about the mascara gate and was it falsies, was it not falsies? And you know what, truthfully, I don't really care one way or the other. The only thing I know is I really like this mascara. So I will put one to about two to three layers up on top. And then whatever is left over on my brush, that's what I will put on the bottom lashes. Now, ladies, I do that because underneath here, underneath our eyes, we want to keep that as bright as possible. And when you get to be my age, when you get to be over 50, sometimes we get a little bit of a darkening, kind of like a little bit of a darker underneath here. Um, ask your questions here and I'll be sure to relay them over to Lonnie. Yep, ask away and I will get the questions. Courtney is awesome. Um, so I want to make sure that I don't put a whole lot of heavy dark color underneath my eyes. For example, like I just put a little bit of that brown, um, that brown eyeshadow in the corners, but I don't put any underneath. I don't put any liner underneath. Um, I don't even bother with the bottom liner or mascara anymore. Yeah, you know what? And that is exactly why. Uh, it, it just, the only thing it does is it just makes it a little bit darker as I stick my brush back in. So let me give it one more little bloop, bloop, bloop. And you know what, truthfully, I have used, um, I've used false lashes before. I think they're really cool, but for a daily look, I just put the mascara on and go. So that's what we have so far. Now, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay, um, yes. All right, so we have our that, we have our this, we have our that. Now, I absolutely love this Maybelline eraser, and this is the pink one. And what I do with this one is I will start on my foundation, on the whole like contouring blush and everything like that. And I start with a real same little brush. 
I will start with a nice little lightening underneath my eye. Okay. And because again, I want to lighten this up as much as possible. I really like this concealer, this pink concealer. I think it has multiple uses. Because another use that I use for this pink concealer is I will actually go in and I'll put a little bit up here on my brow just to give it a nice little shine and a little bit of a highlight. And I love it. Love, 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 love it. Um, Connie Girl says, as I've gotten older, I barely use any brows. Oh, I have barely any brows left on the outside, so I definitely use an eyebrow pencil. Yeah, and you know what? And that's a beautiful thing about an eyebrow pencil is you can draw those. I was going to call them a name, but you can draw them on. And we can do all sorts of things that if um, we can change so much about our contouring, our brows, our eyes, we can do all sorts of amazing things with makeup. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this Halo Glow. This is a contour stick. And I have experimented all sorts with contouring and I don't really need to, I don't want to change the shape of my face a whole lot, but I do like to give it a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of a definition. Sometimes what I had noticed when I first started in my makeup journey is that it was too dark. And I would be sitting there at the store and I'd be like, why do I have a stripe going down my face? I'd be like, oh, look, there's another stripe going down my face. So I have been on kind of like this little journey of finding something that will give me that contouring kind of highlight, but without that bold kind of like line on my face. So I um, found this and I really like it. And okay, Courtney um, says, Lonnie, Gina is asking what your favorite low budget makeup brand is. I'm going to tell you right now, it's e.l.f. e.l.f. is 100% my favorite makeup brand, whether it's expensive or not. It's, I personally think, and this is my endorsement, is I personally think it's a good makeup. It lasts a long time. It, it has a lot of the similarities of the more expensive makeup and it is affordable. And since it is affordable, I find myself playing more with makeup and experimenting more just because it is, um, just because it's affordable. And if I buy something and I don't like it, I mount four bucks. And here's the little tip. Here's a shopping tip for you all right now. If you download the e.l.f. app and you buy your e.l.f. products through their app, or if you buy e.l.f. products like at Target or Walmart, you can scan your receipt into this app and they will start giving you free stuff, all right? I am an elf, I'm in, I have the e.l.f. app, I've downloaded all my receipts, I buy my stuff there, and I'm constantly getting like $10 off. And $10 for e.l.f. products is a lot of products. So I have been shopping that way. So here's your shopping makeup tip for you for today. Download the app and buy your products either there or scan your receipts, get those coupons, and have fun, just experiment. All right, so this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow um, Beauty Wand. And I just put a little bit down. Whoop, I put a little bit down my cheeks because I want to, I have a tendency to have kind of a little bit of a fluffy face. <laughs> and so I want to give it a little bit of a definition. And then I just put a couple of lines there. Now, when I first started doing the contouring, I was going all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and I was putting it along my forehead. I was putting it along my jawline. I was putting it so many different places. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to still be putting makeup products there, but I'm going to be putting a bronzer instead of a contouring stick. So I just take my little e.l.f. brush and I am going to work that in. All right, so, so far, I have highlighted underneath my eyes, I've contoured my nose a little bit, and underneath my cheek. 
All right. All right. We got it so far. Now, another thing um, I want to talk to you about, especially my friends over 50, is a lot of times what we do when we get fine lines and wrinkles, we think we want to cover them up. And I'm telling you right now, you can get super expensive makeup. You can do this and you can do that, but you're not going to cover your wrinkles unless you put on putty and then foundation over the top of that. So instead of trying to cover your wrinkles, what I like to do personally is I like to get like a BB cream and that's what I use for my foundation because it moisturizes and it doesn't accentuate my fine lines and wrinkles and it gives me just enough coverage for me to be able to have a um, kind of a, a foundation look so I over the top of that contouring and over the top of the pink Maybelline eraser I'm going to put on my Maybelline BB cream and I use the shade 120 which is the medium and I get that all worked in and it's just a real nice light foundation. Now, I was gonna say during the winter, I might use a heavier cream, but I personally, as I just like using that BB cream, just for that reason, I don't need a whole lot of, I don't, I don't wanna cover my wrinkles. I just wanna make my skin look smooth. Um, does that foundation have SPF as well? Courtney, yes. This Maybelline BB cream, the SPF is 30. So I have, oh, Anne is asking, hello. Hello, Tori. Tori loves purple. I love purple too. So the first Halo Glow, this has sunscreen in it. So this is the SPF 30. And then the BB cream also has an SPF 30 which I absolutely, you know what? Again, we need to make sure that we wear sunscreen all the time. All right, so I'm trying to make sure I don't have any stripes on my face. I did my little bit of contouring and that's all the foundation I use. I mean, I don't use any more than that and that's absolutely the reason. And we need to get out of that mindset that we need to cover our wrinkles we don't need to cover our wrinkles. We just need to make sure that our skin looks hydrated, that it's glowing, and you don't need a whole lot of makeup to do that. Um, Tori wants to know, when are you getting your next tattoo? <sighs> Probably next year. I don't know if I'm getting one today or this year just because my tattoo artist moved to Chicago and Austin is booked. So. Remember I told you now the contouring, that I use this contouring wand and how I used to put contour all along here and all along my neck, and that I use bronzer instead, and that's exactly what I'm using here. I put on the e.l.f. bronzer, and I put it on the top of my little forehead right there, and then I also put it on my neck. And that's where I put my bronzer. And if you want to use a bronzer, I think bronzer is awesome. It gives you like a nice little sun-kissed look. And what you want to do is when you are thinking about applying your bronzer, you want to think of it like the sun coming down and hitting you where you would be bronzed if the sun was coming down and hitting you. And that is exactly where you put your bronzer. And I like it for your neck. Um, bronzer is a lifesaver. Absolutely. I, I, and again, in my makeup journey, I had never thought about using bronzer and I absolutely love it. Um, Tori Liz Purple says Costco has an SPF 40 BB cream at the Vista location, um, for a few weeks ago. Really? You know what? I need to start going to, um, Costco and I will definitely, de definitely take a look for that. Oh, Connie says it's looking great. Thank you, my friend. Okay. So now, now I want to work on my cheeks and I have been watching all my makeups and all of that and I apply my blush a little bit differently than I used to and what I used to do is I used to take yeah, I used to take my brush and I'd be like and I'd have these two big pink lines 
And what I have done since is I go for more of a little cream, like a little, um, like a little blush cream. And this is from Revolution. And this color is Dolly Rose. And I will go in and I put my blush in a different spot now. And I'll go all the way up on my temple, right there next to my ear and then down. So I put three of them on. So again, the temple, the cheeks, and then a little bit farther down. So I have those three spots. And the reason I do that is because I take my blush up a little bit more because I want it to look like I was just out and I was excited and I have like this little like, you know, like energized glow. And that is where I put my blush. It's a liquid blush. Yes. Thank you, Lauren. I apparently need help with words. Then I take my sponge, my little triangle sponge, and I just start blending it in and I'll go all the way up over my eyebrow and I never used to go there before but I'll go up over my eyebrow down my cheek and then along in this area here and again it gives it more of a almost like I said it's almost like like you've been running and you've been exercising and you've been out doing all sorts of really cool girl stuff and you have the glow because you just did that and I think that's fun and I, again, allowing myself to try new things, I figured out I really like this um, way of putting on blush. So I get it all tapped around. Then with a little bit on my, my, my um, little sponge, I actually put a little bit of blush on the tip of my nose. I go, boop, boop, boop. I boop my own nose. And if you're like, wow, that's really cool, but I don't know, you know, I'd be scared I'd be putting too much um, blush on. You can always back in, go back in with the brush that you put your found that I put my BB cream on. I put my BB cream on on one br brush, and then I blended it really well with this one. And you can always go back in and just give yourself a little bit of a like you can mute it a little bit if you think that you put too much. And so then you have that. So that is basically an all over kind of blush. Now, I still go in with my original makeup brush, and I will very gently just give it a little tap. And that's my blush. So you're wondering about my crazy caterpillar eyebrows. Now is to the point where I feel like it's set there. It's kind of like um, blended in a little bit. And I'll go in with my spoolie and I will just put it everywhere. I'll put it where I want it to go. And if I, I actually ran out of my pencil, but if I find a little spot that might be bare or something that I want to have it a little bit darker, I'll just go in with it again and I'll give it a second, a second little, a second little application. But... That's what we have so far. Now, I'm not done with my foundation look yet because again, remember I told you how when I first started my journey, I was very muted and I had a whole lot of matte look. Well, I have since I really, um, okay, Courtney says really quick, Anne is asking if you go for more cream-based products and also if you've ever thought about trying Rare Beauty br brand. I have thought about trying Rare Beauty. Um, I just haven't purchased it anymore. And I personally go more for the cream products because I want my skin to be moist. I want it to have a moist look, all right? Sometimes with the powder products, especially with fine lines and wrinkles, it has a tendency to kind of cake on a little bit or to have a little bit more of a drier look. And for me, the cream products, blend in better and they moisturize more and they have more of a dewy look so i'm going in really quick with the elf halo glow this is the beauty wand and this color is rose quartz and with this little product right here i will actually give myself a little triangle on my forehead i go down my nose and then a little bit more product on 
and then I will go underneath my eyes right here. And what this does is this basically gives me a shine. This gives me that glowy kind of like um, highlighted shine. And it, this is how I finish my foundation look. And again, to keep it nice and bright under my eyes, I think I went a little bit too much there. But that's how, boop, boop, boop. See how that looks? But do you see the highlight? You see how it kind of glows now? And then it glows up here. And that's exactly why I do that. Because I want to glow. I want my skin to be glowing. And that's exactly how I do it. So before we switch, because we still have to look at something before um, we end, uh, my lips. I am all into a red lip. And I think a red lip with the brown eyeshadow is absolutely gorgeous. And what I do is what I have found that I like. Um, you are so glowy right now. I am glowy. I have my glowy sunscreen on. I have my glowy um, contour. I have my glowy um, highlight stick. I'm just a glowing. But I went and I got the cherry red pencil from MAC. And um, Lauren says, bye, I just finished work. It's 6 p.m. here. See you tomorrow. Bye, Lauren. Have a good night. So I got a cherry red MAC lip liner. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to color my lip red. And then I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. Um, lip gloss. Yeah. Lips. It's a lip stain. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm going to go in with my red lip stain. And I absolutely love a red lip. And I did not know how much I would love a red lip. So, uh, uh, uh. let me do this one. I can't do this and talk to you. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you all remember me, or I know you remember me, but remember when I went to um, Ulta Beauty and the lady was really mean to me at the makeup counter and um, I didn't buy anything because she was mean? Well, anyway, she told me that red lips actually make your teeth look whiter and even though she was really mean, she was really right. And, well... So I just end it with that. And there you go. That is my everyday um, makeup look. And I really like it. And it's super easy. And it's fun. And it's all about finding products that will enhance your skin, make you glow, make you feel confident, and find whatever that is, whether it's a red lip or a brown eye. It don't matter. Just find what works for you and, um, and just totally rock it, you know? Ah, so hold on. Let me get this mirror away because I don't want to be looking at myself because on that mirror I got, there's like a super magnifying one, and I made the mistake of flipping it over, and I'm like... I don't want to see myself that close. So um, we are going to finish up today with, um, you look beautiful in red lips, love the beautiful red lipstick. Thank you. You know what? Like I said, I never thought that I would embrace a red lip so much, but I really do love it. All right. All right. So I want to show you a dress I got. And since you're my shopping buddies, I, I need, I'm pretty sure I know I'm going to exchange it for the black one, but I want to show you what I'm talking about. I got the Hot Shot mini dress, and I really like it, but it's really different than what I thought it was going to be. And it is the same soft material as the Hot Shot onesie. Um, it is a mini, but... It has the cute little built-in shorts underneath. And this is the color I got. I got this really pretty purple. And 
I think I'm gonna, I, I, like I said, I'm 99.99% sure I'm gonna exchange it for the black one. But let me show you what it looks like on because I took some pictures of me in this dress before I came on because I wanna show you what it looks like, right? Now, mind you, I don't have any makeup on here. And so just look at the dress. Don't be looking at, you know, I guess, well, I just talked to you for like 40 minutes with no makeup on. So it's not really that big of a deal. But I wanna show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the dress on. And I really like the dress. I love the length of it. I think that it's a great length. And again, like I said, it has that cute little like, almost like a bodysuit underneath. And I, I like that. I like that about it. Now, the thing that I am really struggling about with this dress is the color. And it's a beautiful color. Don't get me wrong there. It's a beautiful color. But I think I'm going to get more use out of the black one. It's just my aesthetic. It is what I absolutely, um, I think I'm going to just get more, like I keep saying, I just think I'm going to get more use out of it. Because for like the shoes, I mean, what color would I, what color shoes would I wear with the, the purple one? I don't know. And I'm like, well, I could wear all sorts of different things with the black one. You know, I could wear different tennis shoes. I could do all sorts of things with the black one. So I want your opinion. I mean, the, the purpley blue one is so outside of my comfort zone, but what I'm afraid of is that I am going to end up getting, um, I'm gonna end up not getting the use out of it that that I should get the use out of it. Um, looks good on you, love the color. I know. So here's, okay, so here's a kicker. Here's another thing. Remember when I went to Old Navy? Remember that? Remember I went to Old Navy and I looked around and they had a dress similar to this. They had a dress that had the, um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, now here's the problem is, is I'm wondering if I want both. And I'm like, no, Lonnie, you can't have both. But I mean, I could, but I shouldn't. So I went to Old Navy and I found a dress very similar to this one. Linda says, get the black. Yeah, no, I'm going to exchange it for the black. I think I'll just wear it more. And then maybe if they go on sale, I will, um, maybe if they go on sale, I will get the different colored one. But when I went to Old Navy, they had dresses very similar to that, where they had like the built-in shorts and the same kind of like aesthetic. And they were the exact same price, even at Old Navy. So it's not so much the price, but I, I think I'm gonna just get the black one. I'm gonna deal with that. And then I'm gonna see how much I wear it. And then I will see, like I said, if something goes on sale, um, I think maybe I'll get a different color. But Connie says, I agree, black matches everything better, especially your shoes. Yeah, because I wanna wear it with like cute little black tennis shoes, because I have, I mean, the majority of my tennis shoes are black, and I just don't think that that color would complement that kind of like lilac blue. And then I'm like, well, maybe you can wear, um, maybe you can wear tan color shoes. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if that would look good either. So yeah, I'm going to exchange it for the black and I should have that in a couple of, um, in a couple of days. Like, you know, it usually takes about five days. But I did find um, two other things that, uh, two other things that I bought. I bought that for myself for Mother's Day. So, and I'm getting that and I'm super excited about that. Now, I am working on my last Come Thrift With Me video, which hopefully I will have uploaded today. I am going to be going to two places and I want your opinion on this and then we're gonna say um, farewell for the, for the day. But I was gonna go thrifting again. Um, Christine Coco says, hi, I'm new here, just found you, love your content. <gasps> welcome, oh my gosh. Everybody, welcome Christine Coco. I absolutely um, am so glad you found me. And this is a place where you can just come and hang out and 
and feel warmth and love. And I am so glad you're here. But I was going to go to Nordstrom's Rack. And what I was going to do is I'm not, instead of just like walking around and showing you like things that I found, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to like put outfits together and show you that. You know, just to kind of like mix up the whole shopping kind of um, adventure a little bit more. And then I'm going to go thrift, I'm going to go thrifting at Goodwill because again, you know how much I love free people. And anytime that I can find free people at Goodwill, I absolutely will do that. Now, before we leave, I do want to show you my outfit for the day because today I have to go get Indy another um, puppy pool because she she already has a, a leak in the pool that I gave her and I'm going to go do um, some shopping but I want to show you my outfit for the day if I can get back to where I want to be let's see let's see let's see I'm going to go there I'm going to go here I'm going to go here and then I'm gonna go here, ah, and then I'm gonna go, I don't know if I can get back to my photos. Oh yes, yes I can. Okay, yay, we're going back to my photos. All right, here is my outfit for the day. And what this is, this is the Free People Hot Shot Pants. I have it with my freeway tank, a cute little pair of cat eye glasses, and then my New Balance tennis shoes. And then I have this really super cute backpack that I bought, gosh, I bought this backpack probably 15 years ago. And it is, um, it is absolutely, I absolutely love that backpack. So. And, okay, I know, and uh, what I'm working on, and it's something that I'm working on that, um, that I think is really super cool, and whether or not it comes to fruition or not, we'll just have to wait and see, but I would love to have a, um, a retreat, a retreat with, with, with you all where we could go and we could just like hang out and talk about confidence and go thrifting together and you know um maybe have a spa day but i am definitely working on something like that because i think i have an amazing community and amazing platform and i think that that's where we can kind of take this to the next level would be start doing like retreats or something like that and i think that that would be a lot of fun so that's something that is at a later date that we will have to, um, I'll keep you updated as I get more information on it, but that's, that might be something that we do here in the near, near future, which I'm super excited. So I'm very excited that I still have um, a little bit of battery left in my camera. I bought a uh, power adapter yesterday, so I'm going to be plugging in my camera and we're not going to have any like instantaneous where we lose um, power. And, um, gosh, that's it. We have, <laughs> oh my God, I would so come. Connie, I knew it. And so, yes, as it progresses and as I have information and at, if this works out, I will give you all more information as that happens, but I'm super excited about this. So fingers crossed, let's keep our fingers crossed that this actually works out and it's something we can do. And it's something, if it works out and it's great, it's something I would be doing on a regular basis because I mean, this is what I do. I love you all and I wanna hang out with you all. So, all right, so tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to have some fun and we are going to deep dive into um, my affiliate links. And it's, again, it's not gonna be like a, hey, you need to buy this kind of thing. It's just gonna be like, hey, did you know if you like this outfit on me, you can go here and you can see what I'm wearing and you can see if it's something that you want also. We're going to look a little bit on, um, give me the time and the place. I'm freaking there. Oh, I love it. Well, like I said, as I have more information, I will pass that along with you. 
Um, but it's just going to be more of like, kind of like deep diving on the things I like, you know, and it's, it's fun. And I was thinking about it today as I was getting ready and it's, my affiliate links aren't so much like, Hey, I want to make money off of you, but it's more like, Hey, if you like it, here it is. And like I said before, I am the world's worst salesperson. I really, truly am. And that's one of the things I like about myself is that I am not trying to shove products down your, your face. So there you go. There you go. All right. It is Thursday. I want you all to stop. Tell yourself something positive about yourself. Tell yourself something nice. Love yourself. Give yourself a hug. Tell yourself that you are perfectly perfect being exactly who you are. Connie, do not let those trolls on Facebook ever make you feel bad about your hair. I love it. I love you. You are amazing. And each and every single one of you embrace your individuality. That is your superpower. Embrace it and just rock it. All right, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Absolutely love you. This was so much fun. I am just loving the energy that these lives are given. And um, I will be back tomorrow. All right. Love you. Remember, be bright, be bold, be brave. Don't worry about arm flab. We all have it. There you go.